welcome to a new shopcast. It's great to be back with you yet again. I hope that you've had a good couple of weeks since we last spoke. Looking outside, it's as though spring has sprung. Um, we had lovely warm weather followed by really freezing cold weather, which we're in right now. But the sky is blue, the snow is gone, and I can see little tiny buds starting to come on the trees. So it's a time for hope and lightness and flowers. I saw some little daffodil uh, greenery budding up through the ground. Uh, the chickens are out and about enjoying life and the puppy is getting uh, bigger and wilder. Um, we're trying to train her but she is a corgi and so you know she's training us basically. I uh, <laughs> don't want to think about it too much but anyway she's a cute cute little cute little thing. Um, we call her Bella Pearl as you know P-U-R-L for Pearling and uh, yeah she comes to that or baloney or Bella Conchita Consuela or you know a whole host of names so all of them are good though so far <laughs> but I hope you've been well the last couple of weeks since we last talked I've got some lovely things to share with you this time and I just want to say thank you so much for all your interest in the taster boxes we sold out of them the day they went live and I thought I had plenty but, um, and it, they did take a while to sell, which was great. It wasn't, you know, like gone in five minutes or anything like that, anything crazy. So, but yeah, thank you so much for um, your interest in those. And if you purchased one, it will be with you by now. I'm fairly certain I'm recording this a week ahead of time. So yeah, I'm sure you will have it by now. And I hope you love it. Um, and I hope that we will do more taster boxes as time goes by. Very good things in there for sure. So right now, let me think about what I want to tell you right now. I think the first thing to do is to announce a winner from our last episode. All you need to do to win is, um, or for a chance to win, I should say, to be correct, uh, leave a comment here on our YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe to the channel. So our winner from last time is Susan McClintock and you're a winner Susan you said my sister actually introduced me to your shop we both have knitted a vanilla sweater and starting on our second it's the first time I've been pleased with a fit for myself had to hard to decide what color to choose I agree good for you thank you for knitting the vanilla sweater <laughs> and so that leads me right into what I'm wearing today and this is my springtime existing springtime sweater um, this is the vanilla sweater, but I changed up the arms a little bit. You can see here, I did an I-cord bind off with very few decreases so that you get that kind of bunched up uh, feel. So they're three quarter length or bracelet length. And yeah, so I am wearing this today because it's nice outside and this feels like a nice bright color to welcome the spring. But I am, I think, going to be casting on a new vanilla sweater very soon. Uh, maybe after I record this, I'll go home. Well, first I'll go shopping out in the shop, which is that way. I also have a wonderful snippet to show you all the way from Fair Isle in Shetland. Hello, Willy Thistlers. My name is Rachel and I'm a crofter and a knitter here on Fair Isle, the UK's most remote inhabited island. So it's breakfast time for the animals here and uh, let's see who we've got through the doorway. Hi everyone! Now we've got the three hens, we've got Partridge, Bluebell and Daisy. And then most of the sheep in here uh, in these fields are my year olds. Uh, we've got Ludo. Tea cake, biscuit, uh, Flopsy's trying to eat the wire, <laughs> Percival, uh, that one's Lancelot, Mr. Sandman, <laughs> Flopsy, Teeny Tiny, Sage, there's Bertrude, Current Bun, who else we got? Hey, there's Ernest with the big horns, this is Pork Pie, that's Tufty, Penny Farthing, 
This is Wellington, the big one. There's little Barnacle. So best go and get these guys fed. I've lived on Farrell for almost six years now and I have around 25 acres of land and about 70 sheep. I've got mostly pure Shetlands uh, but also some Texel crosses and the other stuff as well. So we're about four weeks away from the start of lambing. So spring comes quite late to Fair Isle, so there's not a huge amount of new grass growth yet. So we're just keeping the, uh, the owls topped up with hay. As well as running the croft, I have a couple of part-time jobs. One of them is I'm an admin assistant for a company called Shetland Nature, which is a wildlife tour company based over in Shetland. Although, as you can imagine, this last year has been very quiet um, as because of COVID, we had to cancel all of our tours last year. And the other job is I'm a knitter and a finisher for one of the traditional knitwear companies based here on Fair Isle called Fair Isle Made in Fair Isle. So hopefully you can see it in the, the screen there. This is my knitting machine um, and all of the garments, accessories made on the island these days are made using these kind of machines uh, rather than them being hand knitted. Uh, there's nothing automatic about these machines, there's nothing electronic. Every single part of the carriage is done by hand. Every time you take out a colour, put a new colour in, that's done by hand. Um, all your increases, decreases, that's all done manually uh, as well. So it's although it's certainly much quicker than hand knitting, um, it's not a it's not a sort of speedy process where you press a button and stand back and watch it do the work. Um, so there's some skill that's uh, taken to to learn the using these machines. But 2021 is hopefully going to be quite an exciting year for me um, as I'm in the process of setting up my own business um, and that will be producing my own wool, uh, which is purely from my 100% my pure Shetland sheep here on Fair Isle. And that's currently being spun over at Uist Wool. Um, and I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to receive it back. Um, I'm also designing and um, producing some of my own knitwear uh, so I'm just doing a few kind of prototypes at the at the moment. Um, this is one of them. It's a little bit of a, a change from traditional Fair Isle. Um, I don't know if you can see it's kind of a sort of cropped, boxy, three-quarter length rainbow sheep jumper, uh, which is just quite cheerful. And I don't know if you can see, but it has these amazing sheep buttons, um, which are by Katrinkles, uh, which I believe is a company based in America. As well as knitting for work, um, I also hand knit in my spare time. Um, I just really enjoy it, I find it very relaxing, although it's something I've only really gotten into the last couple of years. Um, my latest project has been, you can see it, the Bluebells Jumper by Kate Davies, um, which I absolutely love. Um, I just think it's so, so pretty. I had a slight disaster though, as you can see, um, ran out of the, uh, the main colour and sadly, Jameson and Smith didn't have any of the same batch number in stock. So we're saying it's a design feature, the two tone around the neck there. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed that quick introduction to me and to the croft and some of the animals here on Fair Isle. This is sunshine in the background. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you again next month when hopefully we'll have lots of lovely, cute lambs for you to see. I'm so excited to share it with you. Um, but let's talk about what I'm knitting on right now. I would say, um, I'm going to say that the tapestry cowl is my FO this time. And you might ask, well, why? Because you've already finished it. But this had to have a lot of surgery. And the surgery is complete. The patient came through with wonderful flying colors. And here she is. So this is the tapestry cowl. 
And this is a double wrap, as you can see. Um, you could knit it just as a single wrap, which would be sort of like this. Let me see. So the single wrap, either you would get this side, depending on which side you want to knit, or you would get the um, motif on the light background, because you can see, if you don't know already, one side is the light motif on the dark background, and then this side is the dark motif on the light background. And whichever side I'm looking at, I think I prefer. And then I think, oh no, I like that better. And then I think, no, I like that better. So <laughs> you're better off just knitting the whole darn thing. But if you were to knit just one loop, you do get all the colors um, and you just have to decide which, which uh, motif you want to have be um, dark or light, okay? So if you knit the whole thing though, you get everything. And this is uh, 60 inches long, which is a really great length. Now you can see that mine has a little ridge down the middle. That's because when I first knitted mine, when I was coming up with this design, I uh, made it much wider than it is. And so I decided that that was too wide. I wanted to make it narrower. So I basically did a mattress stitch right down the middle, pulling uh, in the ends. Um, and for a while, I just left the excess material tucked in here but I had to make this shorter. This was longer and I had to make it shorter. And so there is my joint. I had to cut it here and take out the extra two um, blocks that, that put the yarn over what I thought I had. So basically, and also it just looks better this way. So yours will not have this join. Um, you will just go whoop and down and it will look beautiful. Mine does have a join. And so, um, so while I was doing that, I decided to just cut and trim this whole little scar, quite a big scar actually, uh, so that I didn't have that big bulky bit. I mean, it did make the, the tapestry cowl very warm, but it also, it was a lot to have, have on, you know? So I took that out. And I didn't do any fancy, you know, um, reinforcing or anything. This is going to be tucked inside all the time. Um, and you can just sort of, you can see there's a little bump there. I can feel it, but I'm, I, I am sure it's going to be quite secure. I'm not going to be pulling on. It's not like a cardigan or anything that you're pulling on and have to secure carefully. All right. So that's mine. Mine has, um, a scar right down the middle. Yours will not, you will knit yours in the round the right uh, number of times and it'll be beautiful and perfect. And mine also has this scar here, which is where I changed the length. Yours will not have that. So yours will be a true um, copy of this, but so much better. <laughs> so we're selling tapestry cowl kits right now. I hope that we have some left in stock if, if it interests you. But this is it here. Look at the colors. They're gorgeous. You can see this one and this one are very similar, but they're actually different colors. Um, and so this comes with a small woolly thistle tote bag. It pops right in there. And I think that's a great deal. You get the pattern, download, you get all the yarn you need and a tote bag to put it in. So that is what we have going at the moment. Yeah, so I hope that you are interested in knitting the tapestry cowl. I think it's a very easy knit. It's a great uh, color work knit. It's symmetrical. So what I mean by that is each chart is the same to the midpoint as it is as it is uh, moving away from the middle. So you do get a very nice um, rhythm going. You know what's coming next. And I tell you how to do all the color changes and how to switch it up so that you have light on dark down one half and then dark on light down the other. And it's really, really nice. So this is my FO. It is finally done and I'm thrilled with it. I really do love it. And I think that, um, I think you like it too. Thank you very much if you've already knitted this or just bought the kit. Um, thank you for that. I hope you enjoy it. I hope to see lots of these on Instagram with the, um, 
maybe the hashtag uh, tapestry cowl on Instagram. That would be great. Love to check them out there. Um, and if you like this one, you're going to love yours even more because it, you won't have to do surgery. It's all done and sorted. So that's that. Um, she's living right now on this little bouncer here. These are my bouncers. Um, I'm sure we did name them, but I don't actually remember. And so this is my Felix sweater, which I knitted in Let Lopi uh, not too, too long ago. And also in Let Lopi here is the um, Radari sweater that I knitted for my husband. And both of these are in Let Lopi and they're just gorgeous. And for the longest time, we've been wanting to make kits for both of these. So we have that now and you should be able to find them in the shop if that interests you. This is such a quick and easy knit. It's a raglan sleeve with a little bit of detailing on the actual raglan shaping. This is designed by Savory Knitting, who, um, who you can find on Instagram as Savory Knitting. And yeah, so we have kits for this. You will still buy the pattern from Savory Knitting and you can get a yarn kit from the Woolly Thistle. And here, this is by Vedis John's Daughter, which I know I'm butchering. It's probably John's Daughter something wonderful like that. Uh, this is a very, very popular and classic pattern. It's an Icelandic uh, colorwork cowl. There's only four colors throughout the whole thing. And we have kits for this. Uh, we've changed up the, the, um, this oatmeal-y color for the cream because it really does give it a good pop, a nice contrast. Um, so we think that would be better in here and that'll be gorgeous. So you can get kits for both of these. And I think for this kit, we are doing this color, but with the cream instead of that oatmeal-y tan color there. So we hope you like those. And I'm just gonna put, uh, put this on here. So yeah, I hope you like these new two uh, Let Lopi kits. Uh, we have a love affair with Let Lopi here. We really do enjoy it. I knit a lot with it. And I think it's time we had kits in these. And actually my little, um, We'll need to put a picture here. My little sleeveless vest. I think we should make kits for that as well. So we will do that too. Hopefully in time for it to be available by the time you see this. So what am I knitting on right now? Well, I'm almost at the time of recording, finishing knitting up my <laughs> Mark II. This is the tapestry cowl, but in a monochromatic black and light gray. It's beautiful. And this is a Selbu inspired design, of course. And let's see. So this will be a cowl as well. Oh, it's so warm. And this is in fennel garn again. Two colors though. And we will have kits for these available soon. We have these exact colors in stock for the kits. So it's a uh, 4078 and 410, both um, fennel garn, Rama fennel garn. So yeah, this is that. And I'm looking forward to finishing that. I'm just working out how much yarn we actually need to do the double wrap. This of course would look great just as a single wrap as well. Kind of like a single wrap like that. So you could only knit half of it if you wanted. If you got bored. I have not gotten bored knitting this. I can watch TV while I knit this and it's just um, it's just flying along really. I just haven't been able to get to knit quite as much as I would like. That's what's taking the time unfortunately. But so yes you have your choice of color or monochromatic and uh, kits for both of these will be available. Um, well this one is. This one will be available maybe by the time you're watching this. That would be great. So thanks too for your love of um, Daughter of a Shepherd's five year anniversary yarn. Uh, Rachel was able to give us a sizable amount and I hope that if you wanted to get it, you were able to, although I'm sure there are some of you that are disappointed. Uh, this came in uh, shortly after, this was a last minute um, purchase on my part. And it's a lovely, beautiful actually, a drawstring bag uh, celebrating the five years daughter of a shepherd and it is organic um yeah it's got the GOTS um certification so it's organic feels really nice 
Um, so we'll put these in the shop. They won't be too, too expensive at all. And if you would care to buy one, um, rush over there and do that. Um, we don't have too many, uh, but if you'd like one, we do have them. Something else brand new to the shop that we haven't had before is Katrinkle's made for us gauge uh, ruler. So it, it can show you rows as well as um, inches and stitch counts along the bottom. So I'm thrilled with these. So these will be in the shop too. And what else do I have to tell you about that's in the shop right now? Let's have a think, shall we? We have lots and lots of pre-orders going on right now. It's all happening. So Lina 11 is out now and we're taking pre-orders for that. I believe that will go live or that will launch on May 7th. So we'll we'll ship those out in time for May 7th. So secure your copy now and um, order it uh, as a pre-order here at the Woolly Thistle. Also from Lina on pre-order right now, as of the time you're seeing this, is uh, Lina's 52 weeks of shawls. That's been doing phenomenally well. I'm, I'm having to top up my orders consistently because we keep uh, getting very low. So that is a hugely popular book, especially after 52 weeks of socks. So uh, we have pre-orders for those happening and that um, I think goes live April 30th. I'll change it if I'm wrong, but I think it's April 30th. So we'll have those books out to you by then. And then um, we just got news that by hand, uh, number 15 magazine is out. And this time it's in Rhode Island. And again, it just looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, their photography and, and color of, uh, sense of color and layout is always really, really pleasing to me. I really enjoy their magazine. So we're taking pre-orders for that. And I think that comes out around about early May. I'm not sure of the exact date, but early May that should be ready. And of course, Shetland Wool Adventures Journal Volume 2 is out, which is fantastic. This Adventures Journal is, is really that. It's all about Shetland. It includes knitting and textiles. It includes other crafters um, and jewelry makers and people uh, that live on the Shetland Islands and crofters. It shows you walks you can go on and you know the local culture. So Shetland uh, Will Adventures Volume 2 is currently on pre-order and uh, that will be ready in May as well. And it's, it's just beautiful. I can't wait to get my hands on it. She is having a reprint of um, volume one. So if you didn't get that the first time round, you can get it with volume two and they'll both ship when volume two comes in. So that is, is selling really well. Um, if you're interested in that, please try and get it earlier than later because these things do sell out. But she did do a reprint of volume one. So it's not the end of the world, I think, if we run out, but I'm hoping to keep, um, to get every everyone who wants one can get one hopefully so um, those are in the shop right now when i did um volume two it made me think of uh the woolly thistle with two o's and two l's which made me think of um a request from some viewers that i introduce myself <laughs> i just go straight in don't i, I just start talking about the yarn and the wool and the knitting. So I should introduce myself um, better late than never. It looks like we're 20 minutes in. So if you're still here, you get to know who I am if you don't already. So my name is Corrine and I own the Woolly Thistle. I started the Woolly Thistle five years ago um, from my um, room over the garage, basically. Actually, it started in a spare bedroom, quickly grew out of that, went over the garage, and then we grew out of that and we moved into uh, Lebanon and we were in an old mill for a couple of years, grew out of that and recently moved here. We're near the airport in West Lebanon. I really like it up here. It's, um, there's a lot of trees around and there's plenty of parking spaces, which we had issues with before. Um, we're not open to the public in terms of um, coming and shopping as a regular brick and mortar. We are online only, but it is in the cards and in my dreams to have a place that you could come and visit us because I know that many of you would love to come and visit the Woolly Thistle when you're up in New Hampshire on your summer vacay or coming leaf peeping in the fall and it would be really nice for you to come and visit us and we'd like that too. But we're working towards that and uh, right now we are online only. Um, I hear from a lot of customers that you consider us your online local yarn store, which is just Thank you, that's really, really nice. Um, anyway, so I'm Corrine, I'm from Scotland. Um, I've lived here since 1992, so we're getting on, oh my gosh, 30 years. I thought 20 years was a long time. So 30 years almost coming up. 
um, came over here for three months, <laughs> stayed with my aunt and uncle who lived in Vermont, my mum's sister, stayed with them. I started going to school over here, met my husband and the rest, you know, I'm still here 30 years later. And I learned to knit as a child. My mum taught me on big long pins and we put one up under our arms and we would knit like this. So, um, but you know, I fell out of knitting probably, well, I don't, I don't think I really ever knitted over here in the States for quite a while. I remember trying to pick it up once and I don't know, I just wasn't inspired or something. And so that I never finished that project. Um, but then, um, you know, after having kids, I wanted to knit my daughter something. And we went to our local yarn store and picked up some sort of woolly acrylic blend because I didn't know any better. <laughs> and I knitted Kate Davies's um, Owlet sweater for my daughter, um, which is, it was a revelation. First of all, these new needle pins, they were, you know, tips of this length and they had a cord on them and I had to learn how to do magic loop. Um, Kate Davies's pattern um, for the outlet was my first foray back into knitting and uh, it was so friendly and easy to follow and I understood exactly what she was asking me to do. I had grown up knitting on very, very um, cryptic <laughs> patterns where, you know, um, the typeface is tiny and it's in little columns like this with a black and white picture. Um, and, you know, you had to do this while at the same time doing that. And it was all very complicated. But um, I think patterns in the old days assumed that you had you know, your mom or your grandma or your neighbor who knew how to knit. And so they could walk you through how to get through a pattern. And that is how I learned to knit. So it was so welcoming and freeing and relaxing to knit Kate Davies's pattern. All her patterns are very good. And, and many people, I mean, all patterns now are so much more friendly to new knitters. So if you are a new knitter thinking about knitting something, you're in a much, well, in some ways you're in a much better place because you've got easy to read and understand patterns and you've got YouTube. Back in the old days, they were very like terse and you, they expected, they assumed you knew a lot and you had to go find someone and yank on them to tell you how to do something. <laughs> but that's how I learned to knit. And then, um, yeah, I started knitting again when my daughter was, um, oh, how old was she? Maybe five or six and I wanted to knit something for her. I was reading a lot of blogs at the time and I was doing some crochet and those crochet blogs brought me into knitting blogs. I found Kate Davis's blog and that was it. Hook, line and sinker. Anything she did, I wanted to know about um, and still feel that way. Actually, we've been selling an awful lot of her 10 year anniversary book, 10 years in the making. We still have a few. So if you're looking at that, I would jump on it because we don't have many left. Um, I'll see if I can get more. Anyway, Kate Davies, what a hero. I've actually met her and fangirled all over her at a couple of different um, Edinburgh yarn festivals. So anyway, um, after knitting for a, uh, a year or two, I started my podcast, which was an audio podcast. I absolutely swore I would never do YouTube, but here we are. Um, I was gonna do an audio podcast and I did that for a good while and it was called New Hampshire Knits. And I was lucky enough to interview various woolly people such as Teresa of Great Bay Woolworks. And um, now is a great time to be following her on Instagram because she has all her baby Romney uh, lambs uh, leaping around, just beautiful. Um, and her wool is, her yarn and wool is beautiful. Really, I've knitted with it, I love it. Um, highly recommend, and that's a nice local yarn from New Hampshire. She's down on the seacoast area. Um, so I interviewed her. I interviewed Nick Colony of Harrisville uh, Designs. They're located in New Hampshire, down near Keene, New Hampshire. They have a beautiful old mill that they um, have kept going and it's really pumping out some amazing wool and yarn. And they have a gorgeous shop. So if ever you're coming to New Hampshire, and you want to stop in at a really, oh my gosh, like jaw dropping, I love everything in here place, um, I would visit their uh, shop, go say hello to Anne-Marie who works there. She's just a sweetheart. She's so full of energy and um, a fanatical knitter like me. <laughs> and so um, that's a lovely uh, day out as well. And you can go across the road to the old general store and enjoy lunch there as well very nice day out for a couple of hours. Um, yeah, so I interviewed Nick Colony, who is um, who runs Harrisville Designs. I interviewed Melanie Hoffman of Be Mandarines. She was a darling, loved, loved that chat. Um, lots of chats. Oh, Michael Hampton of Hampton Fiber Mill, who recently um, 
sold his mill or his spinning stuff to um, a brand new venture right down the road from us in White River Junction, just over the border in Vermont, called Savage Heart Mill. Actually, it's called Junction Mill, but it's by the folks of Savage Heart Farm. So very exciting stuff. We're going to have a mill right in the Upper Valley, right in the Upper Valley. Couldn't be more in the heart of the Upper Valley. And it's about time and it's so exciting and it's downtown. Um, White River Junction, I think they've got big windows. You can look right in and see stuff being uh, spun. So they just got all that installed and are practicing right now. Very exciting. I hope to go visit them soon. Anyway, so I did the podcast, uh, the audio podcast for a couple of years. And then I went to my sister's wedding back home in Scotland. It was in March and it very serendipitously uh, coincided with the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. This was in 2016, just five years ago. And uh, so I went to the EYF Festival first. It was my first time. I went alone. I could not believe how exciting it was to be there. I was in Edinburgh, the town where I was born. Hadn't been back in many, many years. And so I rented a little Airbnb right on the Royal Mile known as the high street to the locals. <laughs> and um, I had this tiny wee apartment for one and um, it was lovely. And in the morning, well, first of all, this was like a trip for me all by myself, going home to my homeland um, in a city which, you know, I don't know. I don't know many cities really here in the States. I've always lived in New Hampshire and Vermont, so I don't know the big cities that well. But going home to Edinburgh, I mean, it's such an old, old historical city. And when I stepped out of my apartment close that morning, I didn't have kids with me. I didn't have anybody else to think about except myself. And I could have stepped out on that pavement, watched the double-decker buses go by, people rushing to work because it was about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Actually, it was probably near 8, 8.30 because things start a wee bit later there. The sun was shining. It was a cool, brisk, March morning and I walked onto that pavement and I could have, if I had my hat, I could have flung it up in the air because it just felt, oh my God, it was just, it was just wonderful to be having this moment uh, for myself, by myself and not having to worry about anyone else and just walk across the street, get my coffee. <laughs> Actually, my Diet Coke, I'm not a coffee drinker. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I I am going to try and kick that habit, but that's another story. Anyway, and um, I got on the bus, and of course you get on the bus, and everybody is clad head to toe in knitting, so you know your you know your peeps on the bus, and we're all headed to the convention. So it was there, walking around, sniffing yarn, buying lots and lots of yarn, and trying all these new woolly yarns. I've always liked woolly wool, and. Um, the light bulb moment happened because I was going to have to bring all this home in a spare suitcase um, that I was buying because I was buying sweater quantities because I knew that I wasn't going to get to, you know, have easy access to it necessarily once I got home. And I thought, you know what, I should probably think about bringing this over for other people. And that was the light bulb moment because I was having such a good time. All these yarns were like, they felt so me, um, all the wool, woolly, uh, rustic wool, um, all the different wool breeds as well. And of course, there's lots and lots of uh, merino and hand dyers and, you know, super wash and stuff there as well. But there was just so much good British stuff there because it was in Scotland. Um, anyway, so that was it. When I got home, I decided I was going to um, try and I um, was very lucky and talked to Blacker and they let me uh, start selling their yarn. And I think I started with West Yorkshire Spinners as well. The very first thing I ever sold was a set of needles. Um, they were higher, higher sharps. And yeah, from three little bins of yarn, um, the woolly thistle uh, sprouted. And five years later, we are really busy. <laughs> very, very busy. Um, and we have, uh, about 10 employees and a handful of contractors that help us do what we do. And so, yeah, uh, I work full time and all my employees except for one is part time, but I think more and more will be uh, moving into the full time arena because that's what it takes to keep the woolly thistle going. We still try to be very, very accessible to you and, um, you know, uh, be responsive. You know, when customers tell me, hey, 
have you seen this? We'd love you to stock that. We try and do that quickly. So we've always been able to do that. And that's something that we definitely prioritize is being able to be like, yes, yes, let's get that and we get on it. Anyway, so that's my story. Uh, hopefully not too long an introduction, but um, that is how the Woolly Thistle came to be. Um, so I get to buy uh, yarn and wool professionally now, which just about satisfies me. Not quite. I do still um, have the odd tipple of a yarn I don't stock, but usually I'm tasting it to see if it's something we want to order and have in the shop. And thank you so much recently for all your suggestions of yarns that you'd like to see us carry. We're looking into them and we're working on it. Surprisingly, a lot are not available to us. They want wholesale or things like that. So, but we're working on it. Right, so what else do I want to tell you about? I just saw these lovely articles here you know these well and we're waiting patiently this is the star cardi that is designed by donna k um, this is the blue version that she knitted up i'm not sure if she actually knitted it or if she had it knitted but we have it here as a sample it was designed for me which was just wonderful this is the one i knitted from the pattern that she designed and there's a big long backstory to why this came around but I did mine in gray and sort of a charcoal black um, and the, these are both and the pattern is designed for Jameson and Smith to ply um, and so uh, we are working on getting enough yarn together for kits I think we are getting to a point where we could have maybe an initial offering but it's going to be difficult to get because we don't have a huge amount but we're going to work on that and we will send out an email to everyone but isn't it beautiful and i don't mind showing you my insides here that's the back side so it is a set in sleeve which does take a little bit of um maneuvering but um the pattern got me there just fine that's the back yeah, I, this is probably the thing I am most proud of, having knitted this. Um, learned how to do the increases here. And actually, the pattern now is really nice in that she, she has put this lovely little design feature there so that you don't have the shaping sort of clashing into each other like you do on mine. So that's really nice. And it, it goes right down the side of the body. Oh, can I show you? Can I? There. There, see? Really nice uh, design feature. And hers features lovely three button buttonholes. We've got to find little buttons for these. Um, hers are very nice, but they were just something out of her button jar. <laughs> so we've got to find little buttons. In fact, I would love to stock little buttons of, a, of, um, of that kind. I just have a little hook and eye up there and I didn't even bother with buttons. And I don't wear it closed very often, actually. I just have it open over a nice black t-shirt or something. And I feel very smart and very clever. <laughs> so that's what we've got going there. Oh. I hope by the time this is going live that we do still have these in stock. Oh, the colors. Um, and Maggie's been taking some lovely photos. I don't know if you've seen them on Instagram. She's been taking some beautiful pictures of uh, John Arbin's Exmoor sock yarn, which we are trying very hard to keep in stock, but it's very difficult. Oh my gosh, look at these three colors together. Four colors, cat count. Yeah, so these are gorgeous. This one here is um, Mackerel Sky. That's one of my favorites. So this is a sock yarn. It does have nylon in it. This is Quick Beam. We are out of stock at this one right now. This is Drumble. I think this one's out of stock, but we, we will try and get it back in soon. Bluth, lovely purple. All right, we've got the next collection. The, um, this, light, this green here looks lighter than it really is. This here is Aggie, which reminds me of Agatha. This here is Dimity, which is a lovely color. Really nice. And then we have Bouldering Clouds, which is a nice dyed gray. And we've got Odd Me Dodd, which is like, oh, very bright. And then, and I don't have all the colors here either. I think I'm missing one or two. 
these are really nice together too. So this here is Warsaw Berry. They have the best names at John Arbum. This is Belle Heather, which I love. And Mizzle, which is an undyed gray. And this yarn is just so nice, it really is. And my favorite as well is uh, Bibble Bug. Bibble Bug, yeah. And it's a sort of mauve color. Really pretty. Right. So hopefully we have those in stock and you enjoy seeing those colors. Also from John Arbin right now. Ooh, oops. Is um, Devonia. And again, I don't have all the colors right here because we keep selling out, but we're trying to replace them. This is their Devonia cream. Now their Devonia is made from yarn, uh, wool found in Devon. So you've got um, Exmoor, Blueface, Blueface Lester and Wensleydale in here. And this is their four ply Devonia cream. And here we have Ivy Leaf, which is a lovely green. Um, I started knitting the ranunculus in this and um, if I ever pick that up again, I got angry with it because I kept making mistakes. Nobody else's fault but mine. Um, but I think that would make a lot, oh, you know what? That would make a lovely spring sweater. I'm knitting mine in this color here, which is Broken Flower. I think I'm going to dig that out because, oh, yeah, I think, I think it's been in time out enough that I could... Um, Maybe rip back where my mistakes are. There's lots of mistakes. And then just re-knit it from there down. I think I might do that. Watch and see if I do. All right, this is Pollen Gold, which is a really nice gold uh, color. Quite deep, not brassy. Um, then we've got Burnished Bronze, which is a lovely brown. And then we have... Bleeding Heart, which is a nice dark red. This is a nice one. This one is hard to get in photographs to show accurately, but this looks quite accurate actually. And this is um, Snow Ash and it's kind of a blue. It is a blue, a grayish blue, really pretty. And Cinder Glow is their black, but there's just so much going on in that black. It's almost like a dark purple, isn't it? But it's black with lots of, I think, red through it. Of course, um, we have sold their tops for Devonia too, and we'll try and get more of that in. Oh, this is pretty sage green. Dusty green color, very pretty. Then we have their blue dark skies. Isn't that nice? And lastly, although I'm sure there's a couple more that I'm missing here, Nightshade. Nice purple. Really pretty. Yeah. So we have those right now. Um, they do move through pretty fast, but I think we are able to get more fairly easily, though it's been a long time since we've had Devonia in. So I would jump on that. Gosh, we're looking a bit bare now over here. There's Henrietta. Thank you for everybody who offered to test knit. I just want to be clear that I did not design this. I don't know if anybody thought I did, but I want to be clear. I didn't design this. This was designed by um, a designer whose name is here. Um, and what I'm looking to test is how much yard, how much yardage is used to knit this in Rama Strickgarn, because that's what I did, but I'm very bad. I didn't write down anything. <laughs> And so I can't um, sell you kits until I know uh, that there's enough yarn in the kit. And so, and I don't think it's evenly dispersed in terms of the dark gray and the light gray. So we need to figure that out. We did get in touch with a couple of you that volunteered. So thank you for that. And we'll have these kits coming and on when it's time, once that's done. But she's lovely. And yes, yeah, some people put a brick in her um, and use her as a doorstop, which is a great idea. But I think she's just lovely on my shelf, aren't you? Her eye placement leaves a lot to be <laughs> desired. Which one looks better? Yeah, I think this one. We'll have her going that way. I think her eye looks, actually, I don't know. I think they're both pretty bad. Maybe you're better at that than me. Right, uh, what else did I want to tell you about stuff coming? 
this is always good. So stuff coming includes Jameson Spindrift. You asked for us to bring it back. We have brought it back. It's going live in the shop today as you're watching this it should be there we're trying to get in as many colors as we can we have another order coming um it's not the fastest thing in the world to get in stock though so um we we will try to keep it in stock i always did this when we had it before we're trying we're trying what we're going to do this time is not populate kits we are going to just have it be a la carte so that you can go in and order the number of balls and the colors you need. And we will spend time building up our selection as quickly as we can. So we hope that works for you. Of course, this is the Spindrift. Um, we did have a couple of kits in their DK weight. Maybe we'll try and get that back into, but we're working on getting the Spindrift right now. So that goes live today. The other thing going live today that you asked for that we're bringing back is Rowan Felted Tweed. Um, that's the only Rowan we've ever sold here. It always did okay. Um, and actually when we uh, stopped selling it, we got a lot of um, blowback that, you know, you guys were disappointed. So it's back and we have new and different colors as well as repeats of colors we've had before. So show us some love so that we will keep it in the shop. I personally really like it. I, I knitted um, a sweater in that from Marie Wallen. It was um, one with lots of uh, cables and it was the whole entire thing. I just did that. My son says whole entire everything all the time and I'm always telling him not to do it and there I just did it. So anyway, the whole sweater was knitted in ribbing with cables. I like Rowan Felted Tweed. It's a, it's a very light DK weight. It's slightly felted already, so it's got that lovely fuzzy feeling. And um, it's got some alpaca in it, so it's very soft. So yeah, we have that for you. Um, and you know, keep the suggestions coming. We, we, we do love to hear from you. Um, so that's coming uh, today. And then next week, I think we'll have our newest stock up where we have some new um, and different wools from them coming along with if we were able to um, restock what we already had we'll restock that so you'll hear more about that be sure to be on our newsletter that's where you hear about these things first um blacker gotland so that always sells out really quickly but we're getting some of that in they've limited what we can get so it will be very very limited in terms of what we will have but we will have all the colors and the natural color as well and this time it used to be a put up of 50 gram skins this time it's 100 so you will get 100 grams this time with that so that's exciting um again be on the newsletter so that you hear about that first but that's coming down the pike in april and also their Jacob, they're mid run with that right now. So as soon as we can get that, we will top up and launch our Jacob from Blacker. The last time we had it, it was gorgeous. Um, so I think it's really nice to have these two specific breeds coming from Blacker. And we will do our best to have enough for you if you want that. So that's what's coming pretty soon, all that. Um, don't forget, we've got By Hand 15, which is in Rhode Island. Uh, we're selling pre-orders for that now, as well as 52 Weeks of Shawls and Lina 11, which is just gorgeous. Did I even mention that yet? Lina 11, lovely lilac-y cover, which I love that color. We have some of that in the shop, almost the same color. Um, so. Lina 11 is their summer issue and I think there's 11 patterns in there. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's 11. And of course, it's just beautifully photographed and some great articles in there. So, you know, if you uh, love your Lina magazine, be sure to order it at the Woolly Thistle and we'll get it out to you as soon as we can in time for the launch date. Shetland Wool Adventures Journal. Pre-orders for that are live and just a wonderful publication. And it's the sort of thing that, you know, if you're inclined to get number two and you don't have number one, maybe you should get it because it's already in a reprint. I don't know if they'll reprint it again after this. And this is something worth saving. If you've ever, ever been curious about Shetland or wanted to go there or have been there, um, I think it's a no-brainer to get this, honestly. And then, of course, Fair Magazine will have gone live um, in the time uh, between me recording and you seeing this. So um, that looks beautiful. Can't wait to get my hands on that. We've been selling pre-orders. I think we're almost out. So if you're interested in that, get on that. I think the price for that will also be going up. We got a communication from them that, um, that it will be going up. So if you get it, 
before you see this, if you've already got it, you got a nice little deal on that, which is great. So I don't know what else there is to talk about. I think that's everything. I'm excited. It's Saturday. The weather's nice. I'm going to go out for a walk and then I'm going to dig out that ranunculus and see what I think about that. Maybe the ridiculous ranunculus. I don't know. I will see how much I have to pull out. And I think I am going to be casting on a new vanilla sweater. Not so that I can bore you with it, though. Um, it will have a twist. Let's just say that. Uh, and I'll share that with you later. Um, but I think that's all I've got for you right now. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you do come back and keep talking to me. I do this to connect with you and I love hearing from you in the comments. To be in the running for the uh, prize, do leave us a comment. And if you have any questions, my daughter was saying that I should do a Q&A episode where if you have questions, I will answer your questions. So maybe next time we'll have a little Q&A segment. Um, so if you have any burning questions, that I could answer for you. Leave us a question in the comments. But anyway, everyone who leaves a comment is in the running for the prize. Uh, you have to just give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe to the channel. And you're in the running and we will pick our winner randomly next time. So I think all that's left to say now is if you go out, take your knitting, keep wearing a mask too. We're almost there, we're almost there. And just keep on knitting. Thank God for knitting, right? Um, I think knitting has saved a lot of us through this very difficult time and it turns out that I still have more to say apparently but I'm going to go now. <laughs> have a great couple of weeks. I hope to see you in the shop and on Instagram and all the places and if you go out take your knitting and wear your mask. Bye bye for now. <laughs>